and uh, oh, I better put the blade in before I go discus flying. <laughs> Well, welcome back to part three of the fling build. Now, a little bit of housekeeping. I would just like to thank everybody that messaged me about me going to Australia and my son's wedding. For those interested, I've just dropped um, a few pictures just at the end, um, if anybody's interested. But uh, coming back to the UK after 35, 40 degree, beautiful rainforest and then coming back to the UK has been a little bit of a shock. Anyway, fling. If you remember in the last episode I had just finished all the balsa construction of the wing. Now, and uh, I've come back and magically it's all sounded. I tell you it's amazing the things you get up to at three, four o'clock in the morning when you've woken up with jet lag. Now, so I have sanded my fling wing. A couple of little top tips here. Uh, I'll be honest with you, um, it's not my favourite sanding a whole wing when it's all together. It's not the easiest thing to do. And uh, this trailing edge is quite thin, so just be careful. Um, and I didn't use the wood plane as suggested. Um, I didn't bother doing that with the tape idea. Um, I basically use my favourite um, perma grit on the fine bit and then just gently sand it up to the um, sheet. Now. So, I think I might have stumbled across a slight error or a slight change in the chronological order of the plant. Bear with me. So, first thing you've got to do is, when you've got your wing all sanded, is we're going to drop the um, launch peg. Now, we're not gluing the launch peg in now, but I do want to give you some nick top tips because I used to do F3K... Um, it's basically my pain, main part of my hobby and was in the British team a couple of times. Spend some time sanding this with some very fine emery paper to get the shape. Um, the basic shape is there. This had a fair bit of flash that needed removing. And I'll tell you why. If you go out for the day and you've got the tiniest, and I mean the tiniest little bit of spur or it's rough, within five or six launches you'll have a whack either a cut or whacking great sort of saw on your finger so just some, spend some time getting that out right now i cut myself a groove um you want it you want to tight fit if you can i mean it's, it's not mega if you make it too slack but mine just gets tight just as i put it in there you are, I have got that set up like so. And all I did to get mine was I used this very, very small um, rosehead burr, marked a line, and then I just slowly went backwards and forwards and then slowly opened the hole up. And in the end, I did use a very, very small file just to get it tight. Now, that is going to go away um, somewhere safe because the next thing we've got to talk about is actually the next plan is to put the wings onto the fuselage to get the bolt holes. And this is the anomaly I have come up with. On the instructions, uh, you go from launch peg and they suddenly say, put the ply holes in for the bolts. You don't know where those are gonna be. Let me show you what I mean. Here's my basic fuselage, unsanded. And the idea is we're going to mark a center line of the wing. And that's going to go on there like so. And then what we need to do is we've got a hole here. Well, screws and nuts there and screws and nuts there. So where we're going to screw in through the wing. So um, you put those ply plates in now. You're not going to be close, are you? So what we're going to need to do is I'm going to square this all off as in the instructions. I'm going to get myself a center line, make sure that the wing looks nice and square and perfectly on the fuselage like so. And then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to clamp that in place at the back so I'm happy. And you'll see it sat on that little saddle there. It's supposed to do that. And then when I'm happy and I've got this nice and square and I might even just drop the boom in just to make sure it looks right. I am then going to mark two holes, or two marks, 
where this comes out and that comes out so I'm literally just going to make a mark through there so that's going to make a little mark on the wing I can then drill down through making sure it's nice and square and then from the underneath we can then add the uh, two ply uh, strengtheners which are um, these so that's the process I'm going to do next get your wing jiggled up on your fuselage as neat and as square as you think possible screw down through sorry drill down or be careful just trying to mark basically where these threads need to go in fact what I think I will do is I'll actually just turn my thread get my screws and just thread them down so they make a mark and then just carry that um, through afterwards when I've done that I'll get back to you right got the wing clamped in place all I'm going to do is I have just Remember that the screws are going to go in from underneath, but just for this exercise, I've put these wing screws in through here, and then all I'm going to do is I am very slowly there you go. that's made a mark. Just make sure that that hasn't moved too much, and then do the bottom one. Right. Now hopefully that's given me the marks. I can drill down through and then underneath we're going to add these um, ply supports. Another little top tip, I would sand those if you can, those little, uh, these little rings uh, before you put them on. Um, and I will just use, um, I think I might use wood glue on those. Right, and there we go, two marks. Right, so I have, obviously we did the, uh, the wing joining, that was for the wing fitting, that went fine. So all I then did was I'd already, as you know, we'd done the elevator mount, I added the rudder and fin, made sure that was all nice and square, then I've slid it into its position and then just took the measurements to get it all square which are in the instructions. Next step is we are just going to use these bits and pieces which you've got in your kit. So we're going to infill all the top here going right back to the boom and you do have to sand out a little bit like a um, shape of the boom just to sort of go over that area. That's going to be the next job, going to do the undersurface as well. And then when we've done that, the next thing is literally going to be, I'm going to sand all this fuzz up and then we're going to talk about insulation and uh, obviously I need to just cover this uh, top wing. I'll get back to you if it warms up. Right, control wires. Um, unfortunately, I didn't have any in my kit. Uh, I think mine was a pre-production kit because I didn't have a boom in mine and I had the boom sent separately. Um, so I've used guitar strings. I've used a the E string, the first string, the smallest one, and uh, I just I actually use those a lot um, in my other. Um, discus launch models, my full size ones. The other thing I'm quite partial to using was uh, Kevlar uh, fishing, uh, not Kevlar, um, used to use braided fishing line. There you go, I need to come back to me. So, all I've done is I've put the, uh, I've made my own springs, and you can see um, on the elevator there, all I've done is, so little top tip, and I'll be honest with you, if I was doing this again, I've got to be honest with you, if you're watching this video and you haven't done the fuselage yet, my advice is, I personally, I would leave all this bottom sheeting until I've got my control wires, or whether it's wires or line or whatever you're using. So anyway, I've used the guitar uh, wires, I've pushed mine in, 
and then what I did was so I've started from this end and all I did was I folded mine the wire over and then I just used a little bit sort of twisted it up and then used a bit of heat shrink top tip just remember you can take the tail plane off if you want to do it because it's less fiddly so all I'm going to do now that's with my spring in that's with the spring in so the spring is installed as you can see at the end there um, I'm now just going to clamp this with a couple of bits of balsa um, I've already worked mine through so make sure you don't get the wires crossed that's why um, I've done so the control horn on the uh, left hand or sorry on the right hand side the servo arm is on the right hand side so you don't get them crossing because another little tip is when you've got that second one in and you've got your other control already established just give it a little tweak just to see whether the other control surface moves because if you start moving it and the other control surface moves it means you might have got it crossed um, if you've got a pair of these these were an absolute boon to be able to feed this through so I'm now just up with that I'm now just going to lock this in place and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to get my arm sorted not this arm the control arm and then uh, obviously neutralize the controls then get it all set up and then again I'm going to bend the wire over the horn slide a little bit of heat shrink on before I do that wire it wire, twist up the wire and then use the heat shrink also, a little tip, just be aware that obviously you've got a little bit of give with the uh, controls, so don't get pulling them too much because you might find that all of a sudden you've got a load down elevator that you can't get rid of or left or right rudder. Anyway, I'm just going to finish this last one off and then I'm going to talk to you about um, installation and uh, what we're going to do ready for the test flight. But we're almost there. Right, there we go. One CX fling from aviationtoys.nl so um, just to give you some idea of the controls this is so my the uh, the wire controls I showed you that's worked out really nice um, I've got to be honest with you I had a complete mare and went and trashed one of my Emac servos. And in a blind fit of finishing, you'll see I've just raised the uh, canopy by two mil. That means I've been able to get some cheap five gram um, servos. It was my own fault, I was using hot glue, and uh, yeah, made a mess of one other servo. So I've had to replace those. So I've got a couple of the uh, nice white five gram servos from Angel Wing Designs. Um, the only disappointing thing, I'll be honest with you, I've had to put uh, 31 grams in the nose. Um, <coughs> it's on the spar at the, well, it's supposed to balance at the spar. Tell you what I did do, was I ground open the opening around the nose and managed to get loads of weight down the front. So I think I might be slightly short on that with the weight. But at the moment we're not we're not quite on the spar, so we're not going to need much more to get that on the spar. I wouldn't have thought so. Yeah, there you go. Uh, the other thing, just to show you, I'm using, which has worked really well, is I've got this little uh, 150 milliamp, what 4.8 volt battery. I got this from Angel Wing Designs. That drops in there nicely and the receiver is underneath the uh, wing so it does mean I've got to um, take the wing on and off at the moment I might look at just adding a switch there but at the moment I'm quite happy with all of that and uh, yeah very pleased it's not a beginner's kit um, I would say if this was your second or third model you'll be fine but um, yeah just take your time read the instructions and uh, oh I better put the blade in before I go discus flying. <laughs> Thanks for watching. Please subscribe. And I'll see you shortly. Take care.